And and there is an opportunity to do all sorts of other things. If you kind of a dog walker of more that style, you can do that. You can build up your program however, however you want. You could even use this program to sort of have three or four dogs on your property and have them there for a couple of days. You know, you can you can earn a lot of money that way. And that's um, what this lady named Cindy is doing, who's earning over a quarter of a million dollars. She's using this exact method, the exact training approach, but she has the dogs for about a week. And she has a couple of them with her and um, and she can charge a lot of money because she has them for a week. And that's how people want to pay her in her area. But that's not that you have to do. It. I've never kept dogs overnight. I've never had dogs here kind of overnight on my property. I just like going to people's houses, spend a couple of hours with them, share my knowledge and they pay me very well. Hello and welcome. My name is Ryan. Welcome to the Profitable Passions Podcast, where we interview entrepreneurs, business owners, and regular people who have found a way to turn their passions into profits. And on this podcast here, they share with you how you can do the same. I'm extremely excited for this episode because today we have Doggy Dan with us. And here is his bio, which is very impressive. He's an author, a speaker, a father, a husband. He has two kids a couple of dogs, and he's the creator of the online Dog Trainer, as well as the Dog Trainer Academy. He's appeared on a number of TV shows, including Auckland Housewives, was the judge on the TV series Dog Almighty, as well as featured on numerous radio shows. As a dog behaviorist, he's worked with over 3,000 dogs in person and helped tens of thousands with his famous online training program, The Online Dog Trainer. He's a man with a huge heart for the dogs, and he's with us today. So, Doggy Dan, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Ryan. It's great to be here. So, Dan, you've done a lot of things, and today we're going to focus on the big opportunity that is out there for dog lovers to work with dogs and to earn a couple of hundred dollars a week on the side uh, with the potential to turn into a full-time income and a full-time career if they want to. So tell us, is this possible, and, and how does it work? Tell us more. Sure. So... I'm happy to share about my story later, but basically I became a dog trainer and it blew me away how how it was actually very easy to step into helping people with their dogs. And I became, I, I fell so in love with dog training and I realized it was something that other people could do. And my whole life I'd always had this smoke and mirror about it. It was almost like impossible to become a dog trainer. And when I became one, I went, you know, so many people could do this. And so I decided to not just become a dog trainer, but to train other people to become dog trainers. And that's what I did. I've I've put something together which helps people. There's a whole lot of people all around the world who are using this method. I've shared with them. And some of them are full-time, some of them are part-time. But they're earning, you know, hundreds of dollars for sharing some information, working with dogs, doing what they love. And I decided I, I just, I love doing this. I love helping people fulfill their dreams so that's what this is about and and there's one lady actually she's making more than a quarter of a million dollars and and she wasn't even a dog trainer before she started working with you yeah i mean we've got like about 150 people who are now using this program that i've put together using this method and they're sharing it with people and obviously some of them are doing it full-time and they're making a lot more money than others um And some of them are are learning less. But there is a lady who's earning over a quarter of a million dollars doing this. So, you know, people think you can only earn like 20 bucks an hour doing it. No, no, no. When you have gold, then it's it's valuable and you can charge for that. And this method, which I'm happy to share more about on this podcast if if we've got time, it's it's powerful. It's almost like saying how much is a piece of paper worth? Well, if it's the winning lottery ticket, Hmm. you can charge more than $20 for it. You can charge more than twenty thousand dollars if it's the winning lottery ticket for twenty seven million. That piece of paper is worth a lot of money, and the knowledge which these people have, they turn up for a couple of hours, and um, yeah, they they do very well. Then, but I, I just want to throw this in here: this is not about a get rich quick scheme. So, if you're thinking, "Oh, I want a quarter of a million dollars," just no, nah, I, I don't even want you on the program. This is about helping dogs, and it's done in a very loving way. I'm just trying to point out that, you know, you can do this. People can do this. The lady who is earning that money, she'd never, yeah, just to confirm what you said, she had never trained a dog in her life. And she said, I'm going to follow the steps that you say, Dan, and 
So that's that's a nice story to just get people interested. You can do it. And it really is like the, the golden ticket. I like what you said there because uh, I got a lot of friends around who have just gotten new dogs. And, you know, at first they had puppies and it was really cute. And now they're getting bigger and they haven't been able to, you know, train them properly. And they're getting kind of desperate. You know, they're like, uh, do you know, like, like it's just the dog's kind of a mess and, um, just going crazy. So, um, you know, when you, when you know that thing, people are really, really interested once their dog starts to get a little bit older. Um, yeah, but we'll go more into that. So, so this sounds amazing and I would love to hear, I, I know you have a really interesting story. So before we dive any further, tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, you've, you've trained a lot of dogs. You've been a TV star over there in New Zealand. Um, which is beautiful, by the way. I can't wait to come down and, and see that beautiful place. Um, you're, you're an author, the creator. It's been used by tens of thousands of people. But, you know, let's go. Who's the man behind the scenes? Like, who's Dan, really? Yeah, I mean, I, I've done a lot of things with the dogs, with writing books and being TV. Um, I, you know, there's there's something happened the other day, actually, when I was actually um, in the middle of a project. I was actually hanging a sign up and uh, I had to go into the garage to get some nails. And on the way to get the nails, I saw this bee, <laughs> like a buzzy bee. And I, I could see he was struggling and I know what he needed. He needed a little bit of energy. He needed some syrup or honey. And I was so on this project, but I had to stop and I stopped and I picked him up because I love bees. I'm not worried. I'm not scared of them. And, and I went and got some honey and I put it down and I gave him honey. And I thought, that's crazy. I'm in the middle of this project where my wife's kind of waiting for me and you know, she wants to get it done. I couldn't walk past that bee because, and I thought about it. I thought, why, how, why did I even stop? I, and it was because I can't walk past an animal in trouble. I'm the guy that will turn around the car and stop because I think the bird on the road is still alive. And there's a video of me on YouTube where I did that. You know, I, I stopped and, I kept, and, I'm, and four cars had driven over the top of the bird. It was oh. like a little young bird, but it had been driven over. The wheels had gone either side of it. And I oh, drove okay. over the top and I thought, yeah, over the top as in right over the top. And I thought, that thing's still alive. And I drove and I went, I got to go check. And I turned around and pulled the car over. And it was sat there going, you know, wham, car going over the top. And I picked it up and I just breathed life into it. I held it, gave it a bit of warmth, looked at it. It sat, it looked right in my eyes. I videoed it. I said, and then I went back to the spot and, Two minutes later, lift it up. I think they get kind of concussion. Mm. I think that's, I've done it a lot of times now. Save these little birds. But that's me. I'm an animal lover. I'm a dog lover. And I found a method which is so truly, it's profoundly, phenomenally, and I can't use it enough ex words. I don't know if they're expletives or just words, but it's powerful. And when people start to discover it and put it in place, people start to go, wow, this really does change dogs' lives. And I want to, yeah. You can hear, I'm still passionate about this. I'm so passionate about it. that's That's what I do. So whether it's through people learning through my online training program called the Online Dog Trainer, you can go there. That's one way I help people. But there's a lot of people who do not want to learn and have their dog trained through videos. They want somebody one-on-one. -on -one. Mm -hmm. And I came to realize that people, some people just want somebody to come and meet them in their home, see their dog, and so that's the kind of approach I take. It's very much one-on-one. -on -one. It's not like big groups of people. It's you go to somebody's house, you share some information. It's kind of more owner education than anything else. They put that in place. And you know what? Usually when you're there, right there with them, they see the changes. And if it's not there and then, it's within a day or two. And they're sending emails going, thank you. That was amazing. Dogs turned around. So, And I've taken a look inside uh, the online dog trainer Um and I watched a few of those videos and I was honestly, I, I'd never seen anybody talk about the things the way that you did. And it just made so much sense. And when I mm. saw that, it was just like, wow, everybody that I know that has dogs, I want them to know this. Um, cause I can, it makes sense why it mm. works so much. So. It, it, it is a very different approach. You know, you, you tend to have these two approaches in dog training. One is you use a lot of food treats and maybe clickers and you kind of, it's called positive training, which is all good. The other way is you kind of use more kind of a correction based, whether it's a, a check chain to correct the dog and say no or a shock collar or a spray. The 
The thing is with both of them, and, and I would say, I'll go so far as to say, the, the problem with both of them, in my opinion, is both, both of those two approaches are trying to get the dog to do what you want them to do, which may sound great, but there's usually something else going on. There's usually, it's almost like, why is the dog actually doing what they're doing? You know, the dog who, let's just say something like, you leave the house and the dog starts barking nonstop. Some people go, well, put a bone on the ground, which, you know, if you're interested, yeah, that works short term or can work short term, but long term very rarely works because it's not boredom. So, you know, sure, you put a shock collar and put electric current through the dog's neck. It may get so intense that the dog stops barking. I get it. But that has not addressed the reason of why is the dog actually barking. And I can explain why the dog's barking. When you understand why the dog's barking, the last thing you'd ever want to do is put a, a bark collar on the dog. It mm. is so inhumane and cruel. That is what actually fires me up to do this because I am I love dogs. And no dog who's barking when they're left alone should have a, a barking collar on because mm. when you understand the real reason behind it, it almost breaks my heart. And um, And this approach is about going, well, why is the dog doing what they're doing? And then we approach with something far more powerful, which is that heartfelt, that heart-centered connection with the animal, going, okay, now I understand you as a dog. Hmm. I'm going to meet you as a dog. I'm not going to say you have to obey me as a human and I don't care what, what your feelings or emotions or psyche is going on. I'm going to come to and meet you as a dog, understand you as a dog, and then I'm going to help you. And... <laughs> You can solve these problems so beautifully without even, it's a hands-off approach. It's like people go, wow, he's changed. Yeah, it works. Yeah, this is beautiful. And, and we'll dive more. I have a lot more questions about your, your method and, and mm. those sort of things. But um, I want to talk a little bit more about you first, which is, I mean, you weren't, you weren't born a dog trainer. You didn't just wake up a dog trainer. And you actually have a very interesting journey and an interesting story. Um, how did you... You know, where'd you come from? And like, how did you end up as a dog trainer? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, for anybody who's out there thinking you know, dog, dog trainers are born, that's, that's a load of rubbish, in my opinion. You know, well, I wasn't born a dog trainer. That's for sure. My mum was terrified of dogs. Let's just start there. So no, I didn't have a dog growing up. We weren't allowed one. <laughs> and um, so I became, what did I become first? Gosh, it was a long time ago now. I, I was a civil engineer. I qualified as a civil engineer. Then I became, uh, I couldn't get any jobs because there was a big recession in the UK. So I became a maths teacher because I enjoyed numbers. <laughs> then I, I realized I couldn't work with kids for my life, my whole life. So I became a police officer because I always wanted to be in the service industry. I wanted to help mm. people. Mm. But I realized that police wasn't for me either. So I sold IT <laughs> systems. I moved to New Zealand from the UK, sold IT systems. And then I became a wine sales manager. <laughs> Eventually, I, I decided, no, no, enough is enough. I went to a careers advisor. And she's the one who actually said, you love dogs. And I said, yeah, 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 yeah. And she said, "If she said, this is for you. And so I, I stepped into uh, becoming a dog trainer. But that was, a, that was a pretty scary thing, you know. It didn't start off so well. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a wild story. And I'm sure a lot of our listeners can relate, you know, going whether they went to college or not, getting into something, and then maybe they're in, in a second career. Um, but just, yeah, like just testing the water, seeing what really resonates. Yeah, and, and you know, the thing is, for me, I wasn't, I could do the jobs of police officer, maths teacher, but I wasn't fulfilled. There was a deep dissatisfaction in my life. And um, for anybody listening who's going, yeah, I know what that's like, <laughs> I had it. You know, I had the deep depression, the dark depression of waking up and going, I got to go to work and sell these IT systems. And mm -hmm. I just don't, even if I make a big sale, I'm not going... I've saved humanity. I did something really good. No, I just made a lot of money. I, I couldn't feel like I was changing the world for good when I was working in the IT industry. That's just me. And so I wanted, I, I basically wanted to die fulfilled. I wanted to die knowing I'd brought real good to this earth. And I wanted, I also, even deeper than that, I wanted to do something which proved there was more to this world than just the bricks and mortar stuff that we see hmm. and i had a feeling it would, i would find it with the dog training in the animals connecting that almost dr do little connection hmm. that spooky kind of the dogs know they know stuff 
And when you start communicating and connecting with them using this method, which is so heart centered, the dogs go, yep, you know, it's almost like if you know, if you know that the dogs know, then you can kind of almost communicate with them. I know. Mm. And they go, you know, wow. (laughs) I had it the other day. These, this couple, they've got a little three and a half month old Jack Russell, not the hardest puppy in the, or dog in the world to train. But I stepped into that place within five seconds. This puppy was like, whoa, you're talking to me. And the lady saw it. Within five seconds, the dog was putty in my hand. She was like, he's like, he's like, yeah, he knows that I know how to talk to him. And from that second on, he was different. And it was just so exciting. You can feel. I'm still excited just from that little puppy. And that's... Well, that's I, I have my own experience like that. So mm-hmm. I watched, you know, some of your videos. I didn't go through the whole thing. Mm. But just watched some of it, started to understand a little bit. And I went to visit my sister. And she has a, a six-month-old, just very smart dog. can't remember the name of the breed at the moment. But very, very sharp. You can just tell. You just look at the eyes and the dog is just like watching everything mm. and um first time i met that dog you know we, we had a little bit of fun played a little bit but we weren't like best friends or anything she's kind of standoffish um but then after watching your videos it's not like i even did much with her or like put things oh, yeah, in yeah. practice but just like this dog became putty in my hands like yep. we were just playing and wrestling and like sitting on the couch and this dog would just like jump up lay back and just like cuddle next between the couch and me and my sister was honestly she was a bit jealous Yep. She was like, well, yep. I like, I feed this dog, I raise this dog, and this dog doesn't cuddle with me. And here she is over here with you, just like being a soft, playful little baby. And uh, <laughs> it's like, I can't explain it, but it's uh, really fun to be a part of. Yeah, it's, I, I often talk about it like a healthy or an unhealthy relationship that you can have with the dog. And so many people have an unhealthy relationship with their own dog, and they're wanting to understand how to make it healthy, you know, and 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 you can have so your dog can be so well behaved and they can love you so much and they can be so happy and relaxed so i'm thinking about this jack russell it slept so much and they were like he never relaxes like that i said yeah that's the happy puppy mm-hmm. their puppy's normally chasing the birds running around on the window ledge uh, jumping up trying to eat flies they said he won't switch off he's always following it but when i was there he relaxed but he loved me he was just waiting for me to call him over and yet they said, and here's the other thing which was so cool was they said to me, um, when we do our yoga in the mornings, he's all over our faces, licking us and biting it. We can't get him off. Would you? I said, yeah. Will I be able to? Like, yeah. And I lay down. He came over once and I moved him off. Boom. And then he sat there watching. Mm. It's like, yeah, he, he understood. Don't <laughs> invade my space anymore. Mm. But if I called him over, he'd come for cuddles. But they were like, oh, wow. This is just, it was, it was, it's a lot of fun. So I love how simple it can be once once you know those few things. Um, yeah, and that's the thing with this method. I I want to blow away the smoke and mirrors surrounding dog training hmm. because it's almost become. I want to say ten, but it's more like a hundred times more complicated and confusing for people than it should be, and it's so hmm. confusing. Even I'll be honest, a lot of dog trainers I think are really confused about. You know, you do this to do this to this and all these different words and languages. It's like, no, no, it's, there's something deeper. But we're stuck in our heads trying to figure it out up here. Mm. And if we can actually come down to our hearts, and that's what people want. That's why we love the animals, because they're, they're real beings who are in their bodies. Mm. And when we can come back into our bodies, we can connect deeply with them. So let's go back to the, the career advisor who mm. said, hey, you should become a dog trainer. What was the next mm. step after that? So the next step was I um, I didn't want to reinvent the wheel. So I, I knew a good way of finding success was to find, you know, four, five, six successful people in the industry and follow them. And yeah, so I basically studied a load of different people. Um, let me show you before that I fell flat on my face as a dog trainer. I, I actually tried to train my mate's dog. And uh, yeah, it was embarrassing. He was a digger guy, digger guy called Greg. I went to train his house a couple of uh, dog. I went to his house to train his dog a couple of times. I think, and it got worse and worse. I'd turn up and the dog would be, it would, it would be jumping up, like barking at me, excited, trying to play. And ended up in this like wrestling match and I couldn't get it off. And it, it was the most embarrassing moment of my life as a dog trainer. He actually said to me, Dan, I, I think we need to stop because I was just going there when I wanted to train the dog. He said, just go and train him, man, whenever you want. He actually said, I think you need to stop because the dog's getting worse. <laughs> 
That must have been a hit in the gut. <laughs> uh, it was well. The worst thing was I kind of knew it was true. You know, I, I knew. So, like I said before, I knew I had to study these other methods. I studied five, I think it was, or six different trainers from around the world who use different methods. And one of the methods in particular, there was a couple of people I liked what they were doing, but there's one in particular I found, and it was a lady from the UK um, called the Dog Listener, and she had an approach which was all about connecting. And understanding, it was almost like you have to think like a dog. Hmm. And I was like, ah, that makes sense. You know, my analogy even now is too many, too many people are still thinking like a human when they work with a dog. And you can't. Hmm. If you understand what the dog's doing, you'll understand what the dog wants, what they need. And and if you come from that place, man, you're on side with the dog so quickly. They hmm. they're, they're like, yeah. So and I put so that in you, place and yeah, yeah started. So the, sorry, I should say, the very next consult after that, after I put this program in place with this lady, it, it was just light and day. I, I realized I was onto something, and that's what I've fine-tuned and tweaked, yeah. So you learned the method and then, like... Developed you, it a bit, yeah. And then then the, just it's a huge change from getting, you know, kicked out of the yeah. house <laughs> as a dog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so what it turned... It turned into more of a me going to educate the owners. So I went in... It was a guy who... Um, he, he owned one of the super stores, the super, big supermarket places, and he had two Rottweilers. He said, I knew him as a kind of a friend, but he was happy to pay because he had the money. And he said, come on around. I didn't tell him, you're my proper, like really big deal, full price um, clients. And anyway, I, I drove around. I was pretty terrified because he had already had round what was a guy that was one of the top dog trainers in New Zealand. Wow. He'd had him around for five sessions already. And I was thinking, oh, no. No, no, no. He's got two Rottweiler puppies, kind of six months old. They're out of control. They won't listen. And I just thought, this is this is a big test. Because if this other guy's done five sessions and not really got anywhere. Anyway, I sat with him for one hour. And at the end of the hour, I'm, I'm kind of thinking, I hope all this has made sense. I've given him my spiel on how to connect with the dogs. He looks at me and he goes, I'll never forget this. He looks at me. Jason was his name. And he says, Dan... I've learned more from you in the last hour than I did in those other five training sessions with the other guy. Wow. And that is the second I went, whoa, <laughs> this is my first dog consult. And you're telling me like, I'm on the, I'm on the money. This is it. And then it got better because the first hour I like to do a bit of theory, explain how to connect. We then, and you could already see the dogs were respecting me and they weren't jumping all over me as I sat on the couch explaining. But then we went to the front door and one of the big issues he had was he couldn't open the door without the dogs just pushing him over and charging through. So we went to the front door and, and I said, let's see how it is in practice. You know, proof of the pudding is in the eating sort of thing. So I said, let's see how it goes. Well, we opened the doors and I had to say to the dogs, yeah, get back, get back, sit. And they sat, we opened the doors. And I remember that moment too. Doors are wide open. Two Rottweilers sat there. I'm just sitting there going, I didn't do it, but I was like, oh yeah, oh yeah. Here I come. This is it. I do this all the time. But it was my first consult. It was my first consult. And he's looking there and his wife's looking at me. And they're like, whoa, this is genius. And I'm and my, at the back of my brain, I was going, if this is my first consult and the best dog trainer in New Zealand is already been here and worked with this guy five times and got nowhere. I mean, where's this going to go? And and it kind of, I'm, you know, I love animals, good with people, but, but it wasn't me. Hmm. It's the approach. It's the understanding, which is so different from just using food treats and trying to get the dog to bribe them with a treat. And it's not forcing the puppies or the dogs. It's not me. That's why, you know, 150 people around the world are now, using the same method with the same success. You know, there's nothing makes me smile more than when I get a message saying, I've just done my first consult. I was so scared, so scared. Hmm. And it went brilliantly. The dogs loved it. The people loved it. Yeah. So one more thing on that, that experience with the Rottweilers. Uh, hmm. Something I'm curious about, and maybe our listeners are too. Is hmm. like, you had that big effect. Did you make any money off that? That consult? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I started at pretty high rates. Um, like nothing. Like I, I'm trying to convert into American money, so don't yeah. take this literally. But, <laughs> but I, I, I started on something like 200 US dollars for two hours, which for me I was like, man, that's up there. 
Because yeah. I mean that that could be life changing money. Yeah. I mean, what what happened with my job is I didn't I I quit my corporate career in the wine industry to become a dog trainer, but I actually started off doing. I set up as a lawn mowing man, so I wanted a, I wanted some income, and I love physical work. Don't laugh, I love it. It was good. It was one of the most best experiences. But I know it sounds so I'm just crazy. Just appreciating go, how many different things you've done. I know, uh, yeah. But I literally you, said, you I wanted stuff that's good. Now you brought it to us, so thank you for taking, doing that. The, but I wanted to dovetail my dog training in with something, you know. Okay. I um, like lawn mowing. I wanted to. Ha- what was that? With light lawn mowing. Well, I hey. double time. You should have seen my six pack. I tell you, I was, there was more than one benefit of doing lawn mower. I, so I was, I'm pushing this mower, and it gave me time to think and 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 think about the dogs. But uh, where was I going with this? Where was I going? With this? Oh, the point with lawn mowing was I was more like it was more like equivalent. Um, I was more like twenty dollars an hour. Yeah, I was on twenty bucks an hour, and I was going, man, I can charge a hundred bucks, like five times. Like that's a lot of money. I do two hundred dollars lawn mowing in a day. Yeah. And I wasn't doing it for the money. I was pushing the mower because I wanted to just, I just wanted to de-stress from this corporate career. I'd been, I've been in the police. I've been pushing it hard for like a long time in these jobs. And I just wanted to decompress. I love gardening, lawn mowing, weed eating, weed whacking, I think you call it over there. Mm -hmm. And so I'm just going, I'll do that. And when I can, I'll just do a dog consult. Well, it turned out, yeah, 200 bucks. And they weren't, they didn't even blink. So very soon after charging two hundred bucks, I pushed it up like uh, American equivalent would probably be two fifty, and it, for for a couple of hours, and then it pushed up to three hundred bucks. Nobody batted an eyelid because yeah. they were wanting, they had a serious problem. Well, yeah. we're not talking about Mickey Mouse problems here. When when you've got a dog, and it could be a dog who's running away from home, a dog who's a bit aggressive, a dog who pulls on the leash, who doesn't stop barking, who's just all over the house, who who maybe bites the little children puppy who's weeing or poo any of those issues cause such stress in a home that it starts to pull the family unit apart if you're living on your own it stresses you out so people would pay a lot of money to solve these problems we're talking people do pay thousands and thousands and yeah. but i was, was aware I think yeah. that's a key thing to help our listeners understand because um you know from my experience with business and interviewing lots of other people the you know, like, people aren't paying you for your time. No, you know, for an hour no. or two. Like what they what no. they want is that, like you said, they have a dog that just will bowl them over or is aggressive or whatever it might be, and they're paying for a result. You know, like if you can come in and just wave a magic wand in five seconds, and then their yep. dog is a is an amazing little pup. Like sure, I, I'd pay you two hundred, three hundred, five hundred bucks. I don't care how long you take. Like do it quicker even better rather than sp- spanning it out over you know five weeks so that's a big yep. thing is uh like yeah people they want the results and if you can give them which this method does um then yeah it's uh it's not too hard to charge what i mean 100 bucks an hour sounds crazy to a lot of people i mean it sounded crazy to me for so long well um, good money you mean it's a lot of money you mean or yeah it like it's a, it's a lot of money you know, like, like my, my, I mean, my, yeah, I, I mean, I, I charge even more than that now. And I get people actually just to come to me. I, I, I won't even travel anymore, you know, but I, I do enjoy traveling to other people's houses. So I do do it sometimes, but. And, and but, you do it one-on-one. Like there's, there's people that do boot camps. There's all sorts yep. of different ways of doing dog training. Um, what's your particular way? Yeah. So I'm very much what I do and what this method is brilliant for is being the ambulance at the bottom of the cliff. So whilst mm. you can train puppies, Absolutely, 100%. Piece of cake. And you can do sort of basic obedience work, sit down, stay, walking around. It's all covered. It's all, it all connects down to this basic understanding of what is this animal, why are they all so upset and stressed and not listening to us. And, um, but most people who ring me anyway uh, have got some sort of behavioral issue. Hmm. Dog won't come, barking, pulling on the leash, bit of dog aggression or just a little bit stressed or... Um, just not behaving or they've got a new puppy and they don't know what to do and and yeah they they will they will pay to for you to go and sit with them and usually i i spend two hours with people explaining where they're going wrong and and usually it's quite funny because people go this makes so much sense you know basically we've we've lost 
what this little creature is that's in our house. And when you explain it to somebody, a lot of people just go, oh, man, I, I, we are so far off the mark. And then the dog becomes a happier little creature, and they very, very happy to pay you for that. So it sounds like, really, you're, you're kind of training the owners. Yeah. <laughs> Would that be fair to say? Owner education, absolutely. <laughs> and and there is an opportunity to do all sorts of other things. If you're kind of a dog walker of more that style, you can do that. You can build up your program however, however you want. You could even use this program to sort of have three or four dogs on your property and have them there for a couple of days. You know, you can you can earn a lot of money that way. And that's um, what this lady named Cindy is doing, who's earning over a quarter of a million dollars. She's using this exact method, the exact training approach, but she has the dogs for about a week and she has a couple of them with her and, um, and she can charge a lot of money because she has them for a week. And that's how people want to pay her in her area. But that's not that you have to do. I've never kept dogs overnight. I've never had dogs here kind of overnight on my property. I just like going to people's houses, spend a couple of hours with them, share my knowledge, and they pay me very well. But that's pretty cool. Um, how, how much, like, let's say somebody had their dog with you for a week or, or a weekend. What what can you charge for that? So in the U.S., people seem to be charging around 1000 1500 for, for to have a dog, which, you know. For, is that for a weekend or for a week? For a week. For usually five, five six days. So if you like dogs. But, and you know how to but, be a dog trainer. You just hang out with a dog for a week and make a thousand bucks. Absolutely. Well, the, here's the thing. You know, the way people have it set up is once you understand what you're doing, you can have. You don't want to go too silly, and it depends on your property and where you are and where you're situated. But you know, you can obviously have multiple dogs because you don't work with a dog for eight hours a day. You may yeah. do 15 minutes, half an hour of this dog, and move to another dog, and so you can have multiple dogs. So if you got four dogs there, four dogs at. 1500 bucks per dog that's uh, let me get the math 6000 US dollars for a week. Oh well, I mean yeah do that with four dogs make four to 6000 in a week and take the other 3 weeks off. <laughs> I mean even even if you are only you only have two young dogs, two young pups and you want to train them what to do. If you really know what you are doing, you can charge easily $1000, 1200 bucks. You and 2400 dollars for having these two dogs for 6 days. Well, if you think about it from the owner's perspective, because um, I don't have a dog quite yet, but we will. And um, I mean, what would be better if I'm going traveling than to have somebody that I know loves dogs, knows how to work with them. Um, that's not just going to put them in a kennel for a week, you know, to board them and know that when I come back, my dog's been loved, my dog's been trained. And that's, yeah, that, that's much better yep. than some other, that what I imagine boarding is like for a lot of different kennels. Yeah, a lot of people do. They seize the opportunity. We're going on holiday. Dog needs training. Let's, let's sort it out. And of course, there's a big knowledge transfer at the end of that where the owner and the um, educator, the dog trainer, come together and they go through what's gone on, what happens, what yeah, what they need to do to keep the, the good behavior up. Yeah, that's a, yeah that, that owner part is huge because you can do train whatever you want with a dog. Um but if the owner doesn't, you know, if they just reverse that, you know, like maybe you come, you come over and you train a dog not to come up and try to beg at the table. Um, but then, you know, a couple of weeks go by and the, the owner gives a little bit of bacon off the table and great. Well, the dog now knows it's okay again. You know, the kind yeah, of yeah, undid the you, training. You have to be, you have to have that consistency in place after, afterwards. So a lot of this does fall back on the, the dog owners. I mean. That's just how it is. Same as same as anything. Yeah. So let's go a little bit more into this method, um, like at the root of it, the, the essence. What what makes this different than than all the other things out there? So I would say the big thing. One of the big things that I touched on is well, there's two things. One is we are we are really treating the dogs like dogs. You know, very often it's almost like if you imagine a fish. You, you can't take a fish and put it on a couch and turn the TV on and give it a beer and expect the fish to be happy. It's a different no. species. You can't <laughs> think like a human and apply human psychology to a fish. Yeah. You can't apply human psychology to a cat. And we all know yeah. that because it never works. I mean, cats are their own. The, but you can't a, apply human psychology. Quote. There's an Einstein quote. It's like if you, yeah. if you judge a fish 
on its ability to climb a tree, it will forever yeah. think it's an idiot. <laughs> yeah, and that's exactly it. And so you have these people who go, I don't know what's wrong with my dog. It's stupid because I do this and the dog does that. And I, I can see it from the dog's point of view. I'm like, yeah, but the dog wants to do that. Mm. You know what I mean? Even that simple thing, the dog wants to do what it's doing. So you think it's stupid, but it's getting what it wanted. Mm-hmm. And the human's going, well, let me give you an example, you know. I don't know why, but I tell him to be quiet. And then when he's quiet, I give him, so I, I say, no, no, Rover, no barking. I give him a treat. And then he starts barking again. Why does he do that? So I say, stop it, stop it, stop it. Rover, stop it. And then he stops. I say, good boy, give him a treat. And then he barks again. If you think like the dog, you go, well, it's pretty obvious. Dog's going, stupid donor, stupid donor, stupid donor. And the owner's going, stupid dog, stupid dog. But the dog's getting what he wants. So Every time I bark, I get a treat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that makes sense. So it's a, a very, very powerful method um, when you actually deal. We are dealing with the cause of the problem here. Um, you know, if I give a, a, I tell you a story, I, I went to work with a, a dog called uh, Zippy. Um, oh. Zippy had serious separation anxiety. She would, dist- she, the guy had a bit of money. He had these doors, which were big double folding wooden doors and he showed me the inside where zippy had been left alone and at the marble floor coming up to these huge wooden doors and oh. zippy had chewed uh, oh, you know geez. chewed chunks off these carved wooden doors you know oh. thousands and thousands of dollars to have to i mean so again is he happy to pay five six hundred dollars for me to come around <laughs> yeah, absolutely man three grand already lost on the doors never mind the carpet and all the other stuff that happens when the dog's stressed and left alone peeing and weeing and chewing stuff up and barking and neighbors complaining and fines from the council so he said please come and sort it out anyway went around i nailed it i knew exactly what had gone on i was really happy and um i said to him this will work few days or a week or so i think it might have been a week or so later i got this email come through and um, he said, hey, thank you, thank you. Separation anxiety has stopped. Zippy no longer stresses. She's happy for me to go away for as long as I want. And the dog aggression stopped as well. It's brilliant. We can walk past dogs, no problem. And I said, dog aggression problem? I didn't even know that, that Zippy had a dog aggression problem. He didn't wow. mention it. Hmm. And so what happens is when you deal with the real cause of the problem and the dog becomes more stable, more settled, you know, the, one of the main programs I share with people is called the Dog Calming Code. It calms the dog's nervous system right down. They relax. They become less reactive, more tolerant. So we sorted the dog aggression problem out without even knowing that the dog had a problem. And that sums us up. I mean, there's some trainers who really struggle to even understand how to stop dog aggression We'd stop, stopped it and solved the problem without doing anything, just dealing with the cause of the problem. Wow. So it's powerful. Yeah, that just like makes my heart, my heart flutter. So mm. we could tell from how excited and passionate you are here that, mm. I mean, it sounds like dog, becoming a dog trainer was a good decision. Was it? It was probably one of the best decisions of my life. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. and And so much of it comes back to, the joy I have of knowing what I do is is in alignment with nature, with the animals, with the mm. dogs. I've got no doubt in my mind that if dogs had a choice on what approach they would like us to use, it's this approach. Mm. It's not put electric current through our throats. <laughs> it's not keep waving treats around our face. It's understand what we really need which is loving strength as somebody who says, I'm here, I'm your pet parent. I'll show you, I'll guide you. You can trust me, I understand you. That's what they really want. And um, it's a bit like, you know, I've written a book called What the Dogs Taught Me About Being a Parent. And that book is, um, is all about understanding as a parent how to connect with your children. And when you do that, then everything is so much easier. It's not about forcing them to eat their you know, you, you can force your kids and scare them through threats or even physically, you know, not that I, I advocate whacking or smacking children. But you know what I'm saying? You, of course you can get your children to eat their peas by scaring them. Or you can wave pieces of food and chocolate around the whole time and say, come on, come on, Johnny, do this. And Johnny does what you've asked. You give him some chocolate. But that's not going to work long term. We all know that 
there's something more to parenting than just using treats and if it goes wrong you can't just find another treat or the right treat there's more to it as a parent and there's much more to it as a dog owner dog trainer mm. Mm. and yeah i think it's beautiful that you're mentioning how the one of your jobs you know you had a hard time getting out of bed <laughs> you just weren't looking forward to what you're doing and didn't want to get out of bed and and now i can tell you're fired up you know and, and you love this yeah I, we only have one life. We have one life. And this was one of the best decisions of my life. It's changed my life completely. And I think what I would say to people who are thinking, I love dogs, but, 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 is think of this as being, as it's a bit like a jigsaw puzzle. If you want to work with dogs, you only have to make a tiny, small step. It's like putting a piece of the jigsaw in. It's not going to be life and death. You put it in, you go, well, that was okay. Put another piece in, put another piece in. And, you know, I got the pieces for you to become a dig shop. Just take one piece and I can show you what to do. The, the analogy is it's more like making a jigsaw puzzle than it is making a cake. You know, if you get something wrong on making a cake, you forget to put the raising agent in or you get the quantities mixed up and you put two cups of this instead of one. It's going to be a flop. You forget about it and it's in the oven. It burns. It's, you know, I've done that. You have to cut the sides of the top off the cake. It's all burnt. You end up with this slithery pancake. Which... So with a cake, it can go completely wrong. With a puzzle, jigsaw puzzle, even if you put the wrong piece in, you can still come back and just go, oh, that was wrong. Try, mm. try again. Mm -hmm. You know, I started off doing the dog training. I didn't have what I needed, but I found all the pieces to become a highly successful in-demand dog trainer. And I've made it so easy for anyone who, I don't even want to say become a dog trainer because it's really just about increasing your knowledge so that you go, wow, that makes sense. If I shared that with people, I reckon I could help dogs and they'd probably give me 50 bucks. If you start like that, well, yeah, just that's, that's what it is. And then you go, this is ridiculous, 50 bucks. Should charge at least two hundred and fifty bucks because. Yeah. I mean, I just watched a few of your videos, and I feel like mm. I already know more than the vast majority of dog owners out there. I yep. could probably go out there and, yep. you know, you charge could. fifty bucks. You could, you, you absolutely well, you could. What is the you know? Let's look at the average person because we have you know some people that are, are making a lot. Um, but let's just look at the average person. You know, that's maybe wants to start it on the side. Um, maybe they have their own their their job that they're doing nine to five. Um, you know, what what can a regular person expect? Yeah, practice. I mean, I would fully recommend anyone who's thinking of doing this, of thinking of doing it on the side. Nearly everybody who is doing this, who's, who's learning this approach and, and making money off it is doing it on the side to start with, even if you want to become full time, because then you don't have this pressure and it's not like. Um, yeah. So once once you've you've gone through the videos and you've watched them, which you know, takes as long as depends how long it takes you to get through a big series on Netflix, you know, if you sit there and binge watch it's very quick but once you've gone through it you go well i get it i see where everyone's going wrong so you put it in place you can turn up on your first consult like me and probably i would say i wouldn't charge less than I'm trying to do it, convert it quickly again probably 300 us is what i'd be charging for for a couple of hours of work and you love it so much you'll probably be there for three hours because you're so happy a bit of travel time maybe but that's kind of what we're looking at so you charge you're getting about 300 possibly a bit more but let's just just keep it at just 300. You can do maybe one of those a week, two of those a week pretty easily. You know, and if you do, yeah, if you take a day off and do two in a day, you can do six, 900, but five or 600 bucks is easy in a week. Hmm. It's not, you're not going to be- And that's for just a few hours. On hanging top. out with dogs. <laughs> yeah. This is the thing. This this is the most crazy part. And, and so many people have said this. You know, after they've done the training and they've gone, okay, I'm going to do my first consult. Please, you know, people literally say, please pray for me. I'm so scared. And then the next thing is they go, I did it. It was great. It was so successful. I felt guilty taking the money off them because I felt so, I had so much fun. Like, yeah. I know, I know. You walk out and they're going, thank you. Thank you for coming. And you're going, oh, I loved it. That was the best, best couple of hours I've had in years. And you just gave me like a lot of money. It's like, that's how that's, it is. That's amazing. Yeah. And, and I'm thinking, because I've, I've done a little bit of stuff in marketing, you know, I've worked on myself, and I'm, I'm thinking the dog owners, they, like, they know that their dog is misbehaving. 
You know, they're very conscious of it. They see their dog every single day. And so, I mean, it doesn't need to be complicated. I know you have the whole business side of things, all the details, you know, in, in yeah. your program. But I'm just yeah. thinking like, if someone's wondering, okay, but I've never worked for myself or I've never done freelancing, like how would I go find people? Like I'm realizing it could be just as simple as go onto Craigslist and say, hey, do you have dog problems? Um, only pay me if I fix them. And like, then they I, say, hey, shoot me a text and I'll come over, hang out for an hour or two. And if you see a difference, then, you know, pay me 100, 200 bucks. And if not, you know, maybe they don't right. pay you. But you, you get to hang out with dogs. Like, it's so easy to find the people that need it around. You nailed it when you said people know when they've got dog problems. And they also know when somebody turns up and they're giving them a solution. Mm -hmm. That's the other bit. You know, people yeah. turn up and go, this person's full of rubbish. They're just talking. We know all this. We know all this. Use a treat. Say good dog. <laughs> dog sits. Give them another treat. Change the treats. Lots of treats. But when you turn up and you're telling them something different they've never heard before, they're instantly like, whoa, didn't know that. Didn't yeah. know that. Yeah, we're doing this wrong. I can see the dogs changing with you. That happens in two minutes, five minutes. So with every wow. person I've worked with and helped to become working with dogs, I've said to them this, offer your first hour for free. You say, mm -hmm. within the first hour, if you're not happy with what I'm saying, just say, hey, this doesn't make sense. We don't like you or whatever. Or, and How certainly. can you say no to that? There's nothing to lose. No. And nobody has ever said this doesn't make sense. Nobody's ever been told go away. <laughs> Nobody's ever said I'm not paying you, you know, 59 minutes. Okay, wow. time's up. Yeah. Because this method really does work. So absolutely. And what happens is it becomes word of mouth. I was just going to say that. because Word of mouth <laughs> is everything. Because if you're a good dog trainer, you know, you got to work with Sheila. And Sheila. everyone knows Sheila's dog's terrible. <laughs> you know, Sheila's dog comes to the cafe and it barks and it yaps and it jumps up and she has to keep treating it. We keep telling her not to treat it. But, you know... Well, next week, Sheila says, I'm getting this person come around called Doggy Dan. Mm -hmm. We're going to see. Oh, sounds good. And then guess what? A couple of weeks later, Sheila's dog's not jumping up. She said, it was amazing. It was amazing. Oh, I'll tell Betty. I'll tell my sister. My sister should get him. So you go from one to five people. And then it goes, you know, six months later, there's five people have all told five. So it's 25 people. So you have all these disciples out there, all these people. I mean, I got too busy. I just got way too busy. And there's a lot of people who are in the dog training program that I've put together. They're way too busy. They're having to stop. They don't do any advertising. I offered somebody a, a great opportunity to get some business. She said, Dan, to be honest, I just can't handle any more. Put your prices up. <laughs> that's so great because mm. there, there's so many things out there that's like, hey, you can make some money doing this. But they kind of conveniently leave out the actual business side of it and, and how hard it can be to get out there and find people. But with this, it really sounds pretty straightforward. Um, yeah. Just like, <laughs> cause if you're really creating that kind of impact, the word of mouth is going to be there. People have their friends over and they're like, Hey, I've got a dog. What happened here? Cause yeah. little, yeah. um, little rusty, the pooch is a, uh, is a sweetheart now and he's not nipping at my heels. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Oh. And, and I, I've put a lot of stuff together so that if you do want to scale it and become full time, there are ways you can do it, which again, is totally cost efficient. Effectively, it doesn't cost you any money because you get the money comes straight back that very same week, put a bit of money in advertising, it comes back. And I found the exact person who can help you do that if you wanted to go that track. But I would definitely start off small and just enjoy a bit of word of mouth and watch what happens and you'd be blown away. So let's dig a lot more into, into how this plays out for the, like for anybody that's interested in becoming a dog trainer. Cause if they're still listening, then, um, then this has caught their attention. So we talked about word of mouth and, and, you know, how simple it could be to find people, but, um, you know, becoming in demand for a lot of people that can, it could be hard to imagine. So what are the keys that you've seen to not only being successful, but also being a very in demand trainer? The... The first thing is you do have to have a method that works. Yeah, of course. I Ideally. mean, be, I, look, I'll stick my neck out on the line. I would say the standard of dog training worldwide is very low. Mm. It is very low. And I, you know, I, I, I want to change that. And this approach will change it. Because a lot of what people are doing doesn't have the foundation that this method will give you. And if you just give people this method, it's almost more than everything else. So the first thing is you do need a method which is powerful. And 
you know, let me give you an example of where I'm coming from. 90% of the clients I work with, I don't even use any food treats at all because I don't mm. need to to get the result. So imagine that nine out of 10 dogs I'm working with, it, there's no treats, but the dog's listening to me, the dog's changing, the owners can see it. I mean, wow. I know people are listening going, well, what do you do? Yeah, what do I do? It's yeah. like magic. <laughs> it's like Dr. Doolittle. And you can see I'm fired up because that's power. That's that's way more power. And I've never used a shock collar in my life. So mm. just to clarify that, we're not using force. So you need that. The other thing you need is you need to love dogs. Obviously, you need to be happy or you need to enjoy, in my opinion, working with dogs. Hopefully, that's a given or you wouldn't be listening to this podcast. Yeah. The one which the piece which is usually not so obvious to people, especially with this approach, is a lot of the time you're going to be working with people. So if you like people, if you feel like you're good with people, enjoy talking to people, that's the big bonus. That's the winner. That's the one which can turn it. So if you're one of these people who loves dogs and loves people, man, man, <laughs> I got no words to say. But you've only got one life. And if you're good, if you're good and like, like helping people, and you can chat to people. Let's talk. <laughs> let's just talk. That's it's fun and it, yeah it's it fun. sounds like so much fun um, oh. i mean is it is it like is it as glamorous as it can sound like is it, it, do, it, it, it what, what's it like that, you know, i like, wished i'd had a camera on my back i wished <laughs> i'd written a book because some of the stuff i've seen i've been to the richest man in new zealand's house i've been to some of the poorest houses in new zealand i i have seen stuff which just blew my mind it was so entertaining i've turned up to places where they ended up we ended up hugging and almost crying and they wanted to offer me food and sit down and have a meal you know i've done dog consults on boats you know it, it just it's hilarious it's so fun because Dogs are owned not just by the rich or the poor or the, the right or the left or the up or the down or the whatever. They're owned by everybody. Yeah. <laughs> you know, black, white, gays, lesbians, straight, Catholics, Muslims, everybody loves, you know, we all love dogs. So you turn up you, and that's part of the fun. You know, the, there was one lady, um, there was one lady, she rang me and uh, she said to me, uh, can you train my dog? This is what's happening. La la la. She said, and I said, yep, 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 I can help. Okay, could you come on Thursday? I said, yeah, yeah, Thursday, I'm, that's fine. I said, whereabouts do you live? She says, well, we, we live in Fiji. <laughs> so, and you were well, in New Zealand at the time, right? I was in New Zealand. I was like, well, How far well hang that? on, <laughs> Thursday, I mean, it's probably as far as it is for you, not as far as, <laughs> it's about as far as for somebody in California to fly to um, Hawaii. It was wow. like, it's still like, oh, hang on, that's like, not sure I can get there by Thursday. It's Monday today. <laughs> I haven't told my wife yet. Anyway, I said, look, she said to me, look, I'll, We've got accommodation on the beach. We've got a place you can stay. They oh. had they had like um seven little chihuahuas. <laughs> <laughs> she had, and it was so cool because um they said nobody has like these little pedigree, pedigree dogs, but we've got seven, and they're wow. all out of control. They're yeah. all out of control, Dan. It's a nightmare. Um, and like, she said, I we'll put you up that. seven little chihuahuas. Oh, it was, out of it control. was. I mean, this this itself could have been a book. It was just brilliant. <laughs> she said you'd have your own. You have your own apartment property on the beach. It's got a swimming pool. I was like, well, I don't need a swimming pool if I'm on the beach. I'll be okay. I don't need both. But she said we'll fly you out. We'll fly you back. And I said, well, as long as my wife's happy, I'll be there Thursday. So you know, wife came home. I said, babe, off to Hawaii. I mean, uh, Fiji on Thursday, if that's okay. Train a dog. <laughs> it was great. And needless to say, when I was there, I explained it. I mean, we didn't even need to. I think I booked off two days just because I fancied, you know, if you're going to go to Fiji, you don't go for two hours. You go for two days. And within a couple of a very short space of time, she was like, oh, my gosh, I've got it. She actually, her analogy was, I train all of my children and my sister's children and everybody comes to me for the training. Because mm. I don't understand how to connect with the children and say, listen, I'm in charge. This is what you got to do. And they all, they're all very, so she got it. She was like, oh, yeah. So wow. it's a lot of fun. And one of the things I love about this approach is it's not about forcing dogs and it's not about bribing them. Like you look at, we have little rats. That's what we have right now. And read the books for training rats. And I don't know how similar it is to dogs, but like even the dog training stuff, it's like, it's all about reinforcement training. It's like, you got to, you know, either punish them or you have to bribe them. And that's, that's not 
what you're what you're saying here. You you have a more hands off approach that connects with them. Absolutely. Uh, it look people who are listening to this thinking, well, tell us more, explain to us how this really works, Dan, because you're kind of, you know, sounds a bit smoke and mirrory. <laughs> the, let me give you an analogy of how this works. Because I hear you, this is not about using treats and it's not about using force. My analogy is this. We've all been to school for a certain length of time, hopefully, probably most of us anyway. We've all had a teacher and she, could, let's just think of a teacher where often it's a, a smaller, maybe a, a little old lady, should we say, you know, 60, 70 year old lady, very demeaning, um, demeer is it, or small, small lady, but she has yeah. full control of the class. Mm. Just a minute. She says, Sit down, everybody, be quiet, turn to page 36, get your pencils out. And everybody does it because she just has that connection. She's not wandering around with a baseball bat, you know, down a hidden, <laughs> ready to smack somebody. And she hasn't got a little pot of sweeties. Well done, you were first. Well done, treats for yeah, you. Or, or a stack of detention slips. No, people know her, people love her, people know she's strong, she's got rules and you need to follow her and it's fun and you love those lessons because she's got control of the class, you respect her, she respects yeah. you. Now that same group of children leave that classroom, they exit quietly and calmly and they go down there to where there's a, maybe a young, young, brash, strong student, you know, student teacher who's not quite got the skills yet and everyone's just noisy, throwing paper airplanes, shouting, and the, the teacher's shouting, and the teacher, this bigger teacher, shouts, sit down, be quiet, everybody, turn to page 36 and get your pens out. Nobody listens, and everything carries on. It's mayhem. They have no control. They just don't have the control. Now, here's the question. Do those children not understand what sit down, be quiet, turn to page 36 and get your pencils out means? Hmm. No, they understand. Hmm. They know exactly what it means. So do those children need training? to be made to do it or is it something that maybe the teacher could upskill in what i mean what is going on there when we understand what's going on there that's we start to go wow i see what you mean same group of kids who are not happy who are just rioting effectively out of control and yet with a different teacher they that's the skill when you when you give the dog owners the knowledge and understanding of how to stop the dog from being so crazy and barky and jumpy and silly People are like, wow, thank you. Thank you. You really understand dogs. And so let's go into the dog's mind for a second. Because when you were chatting earlier, you gave another metaphor for what happens inside the dog's head. And mm. it, was a, it was around a house party as a, as a metaphor. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, so what I was sharing with that is, and I often share this, is dogs want to switch off. They want to switch off and relax. That's why I put together. A, yeah. <laughs> It's true. We, I put together a program called the Dog Calming Code because so many of these dogs are so stressed. They're so kind of trying to do stuff. And that's why I said it's no good just trying to st stop the dogs because you've got to understand why they feel they need to do it. And so many of these dogs, if you think of it as an analogy, as when you have a dinner party, everybody comes around and everyone's you know drinking and eating and relaxing. But you, because you're in charge, you're wandering around and I'm generalizing here, but the person in charge is wandering around going, more drinks? Do you want some more drink, Derek? Oh, yeah. Wendy, more drinks, more nibbles? And people are going, no, no, we're fine. Sit down and relax. But you can't because it's your dinner party. So they, yep. people go into the kitchen. They start wiping surfaces down. And you see people sweeping the kitchen floor at a dinner party. I'm like, what are you doing? Sit down and relax. They like, can't relax. Because how loud's the music? Like, is that person over there having a good time? Like, how's the fire in the... The pit outside. Just exactly. Like, yeah, you just, don't just sit down and aware. pick a book off the couch and I mean off the shelf and go, I'm going to read a book. I'm going to relax Yeah. because you're in charge. And mm -hmm. it's like that for these dogs. When they're in charge, uh. they don't switch off. They can't switch off. Mm. Because if you go to another party, you might sit down in the corner and drink your wine and slowly chat to somebody and find a magazine and relax. And you yeah. just chill. You don't have all that responsibility. And so many dogs have this huge responsibility that we're not aware of. But when you can switch the dog's mind off, they relax. And not only that, they listen to you just like the students in the classroom. And then they're so easy to train. They're so much more listening to you and respectful. So Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. And I got so many stories like that. There was actually a Tibetan Mastiff, which I don't know. They're the huge fiery red 
red fur coming off them and i went to work with one <laughs> don't tell my was... fiance she'll want one. <laughs> oh, these th- i think the most expensive dog in the world is a tibetan mastiff it went for over a million dollars yes yeah okay uh, this, definitely this... not gonna get one <laughs> <laughs> and and this fiery thing anyway was um he was out of control. He wouldn't calm down, wouldn't shut up, wouldn't stop barking, especially when visitors came over. So I came over. I did my did my trick, did my thing. And um, the dog lay down. It took a, might have taken 15 minutes or 10 minutes, but it was still record-breaking time because it would never sit down or switch off if any visitors came. Anyway, then the dog lay down. And then I'm looking at the dog. I'm going, that thing's looking pretty sleepy. I can't remember his name. Let's say it was Rufus. I said, Rufus, Rufus, come here. Rufus, come. Rufus didn't move. I said, Rufus. I said to the guy, Rufus is asleep. He said, no, no, he won't be asleep. I said, he's asleep. It ended up with us both lying over the top of Rufus, shouting in Rufus's ear, going, Rufus, Rufus. Gone. Happiest sleep of this dog's life. Because the dog, you know, they sleep and they're awake and they're asleep and they're awake. But when you put this in place, the dog goes into the deep sleep. And this mm. dog had gone probably for the first time in a long, long time. And it was all because I turned up and said, buddy, you can switch off now. I'm in charge. Wow. And he was almost in tears. He was like, I've never seen my dog do this. I said, yeah, that's how they want to be. It must and, have been um, a refreshing sleep right there. Oh, I still remember it. It was, the, it was the fact that he was denying it was possible that his dog had fallen asleep. And, and, you know, and that is not uncommon. The most common phrase I get when I go to somebody's house is he's never done that before. Hmm. You know, whether it's not barking when somebody comes to the front door or walking on the lead nicely and not pulling. Wow. So, I mean, everything that I've heard here is amazing. Um, I imagine there's some people that are thinking, I'm not sure if I could do this because... Um, I'm not that experienced with dogs. Maybe they never even had a dog, but they really like dogs. Like, um, like just, just clear the air. Like what kind of experience with dogs do you actually need to have in order to do this? I would go so far as to say none. I really will. You need to love dogs, but let's, if you start from scratch, it's in a way you're just going to be learning the basics and you can you do that. You probably actually don't even have any bad habits already. I kind of didn't want to say that. But, you know, if you think <laughs> you know exactly what to do, you've kind of got to unpack some of that stuff to then kind of go with you. And, oh. and if you only need to do this much and you've already got this much knowledge, you know, you've got this much knowledge. I know exactly what to do. I've got all these training programs and processes which I've done for years. And, and you only need to do this. It's going to be hard for you to kind of, I don't need to do all of that. But if you've got a clean slate and I say, just do this, this, this and this. And see what happens. So, does that answer your question? It I does. mean, yeah. if you love dogs and, and have worked with dogs and had dogs, it's obviously a bit of an advantage. But yeah, it, it sounds like with what you put together is, you know, if someone if they don't have much experience, they can learn pretty quickly. And if they do have experience with dogs, again, they can learn just the little bits they need to really take yeah. their their thing to another level. I mean, um, at the end of the day, Cindy, who's earning a quarter of a million dollars a year, she she had never worked with a dog <laughs> in her life. She'd wow. never been paid to train dogs. She'd had dogs. But she said to me, I'm just going to do exactly what you say, step by step, um, because I trust you, is what she said. So, so, And a lot of people have never trained dogs. Most people, 95% of people who are using this program have never trained a dog. They've had dogs, but never, never actually trained one. So step by step, that's what Cindy did. Um, so... Do, do you give all of the step-by-step information in, in what's your what's your program called? So it's the Dog Trainer Academy. Okay. Dog Trainer Academy, yeah. Dogtraineracademy.org is the actual website. And tell yeah. Us, yeah. Like, for, yeah. What, what's what's inside that? Like just tell us a little bit more about it. So so basically, in a way, what I did when I was a dog trainer, I went, I would love other people to be able to go, I can do this. Because part of me went, other people could do this. You know, part of me wanted to keep it a secret. I'll be honest. Part of me went, I don't want to keep this a secret. I don't want anyone else to know how easy it is when you know what to do. It's like I had the secret key, but I've there was got a the bigger ticket. <laughs> I got the ticket. I'm not, I'm not sharing it. I'm not sharing this with nobody. Yeah. Because <laughs> then everyone's going to pay me and they're going to think I'm great. But the my big heart was like, no, this is for the greater good. This has got to be shared. People mm. have got to know about this. So I thought, well, what would I most want? 
what videos would I like to see? What knowledge would I want so that I could do it? And so I basically went back to the start and said, well, I wished I'd been shown this and I wish I'd been shown this video, which I never had. And, and so there's a lot of theory and explaining it. But the key bit which I actually share is I've, I paid for cameras to basically be behind me and be with me as I get out the car on a dog consult. So I'm going to work with the a moment you arrive. nine-month-old German Shepherd. And you see the videos, right? Wow. Okay. This is, we're going to go meet Derek. He's a nine-month-old <laughs> German Shepherd. And um, apparently his owner's called Alicia. Knock, <laughs> knock, knock. Roar, 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 roar. <laughs> <laughs> and you see, it, the beauty of it is it's not edited. So you see me turn up and say, hello, Alicia. None of it's primed. Uh, it's not like some reality yes. TV show where, you know, people have been around to check that Alicia's the right sort of person. Yeah. We're not kind of making sure the property's right, that the dog's the right one for TV. This is real stuff. Wow. And you see me walk in and ask, can I sit here where let's do this, let's do that. Sure, we may kind of just set up a camera or, you know, get a couple of cameras in there. And everything's filmed. I've got my mic on. You can hear every word I say. You hear every question. You hear what's going on, the problem. And then you see me as I go, okay, let's start. You see the magic. And when you watch me, okay. And you go, okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. And you watch. And you can see the owner. You can see what I'm saying, how the owner responds. You can see how the dog changes and responds. You can see it happening. And and at the end of this, and the, the concerts, like I say, usually between two and three hours long. You see wow. the dog change. And we may go to a park and do some training there, but usually it's mainly in the house. And then you see people say, thank you. I can't believe it. And they're not actors. They're real people. They hug me. I, you know, and they How did you get the owners to agree to that? Did you just say, hey, like... Or, yeah, I'll be, honest, they, I'll be honest. I actually dropped the price on some of them. Well, yeah, I mean, that... I just said, hey, I, I, you know, I charge uh, 600 bucks New Zealand or... But um, if you happen to become a film, I'll do it for five hundred bucks. And I'm like, well, yeah, sure, no wish. Cool, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, some of them, I, I think they did it for full price. They didn't even drop the price. People, people kind of like. Look, gonna be on, in their yeah, mind, it's a reality <laughs> TV show. <laughs> Thing is, we don't, we didn't edit it like a reality TV show. So there's less kind of. It's more fascinating, in my opinion, because it's true. It's unedited. And it's real. So rather, you know, on the reality TV shows, you go, I see the dog there, and I see the dog there, but there's this bit in the middle. It's kind of missing. Yeah, How did totally. something's changed? Yeah, something's changed. Oh yeah, something's changed. And very often the something is the electric shock collar that was put on the dog and it was removed for two weeks and you don't see the I mean, these are a lot of the reality TV shows are so short, the, the cramming pieces in and ninety percent of it's cut out. This is a two and a half hour session and it's all in there. That's amazing. So, and you have so 30, I did that about 20, 30, 30, 30, 30 times I did that. So wow. you got everything from a little puppy, and I leave all the muck-ups in there. So there's a little puppy who pees on the carpet, and there's, <laughs> there's some hilarious situations. But I just thought if people could see me doing it 30 times, yeah. they'll go, I got it. I can do right. this. And that's what people say. They go, once I saw you doing it, I'm like, he's repeating. He's doing the same thing. Yeah, because it's the same basic foundation. Hmm. Tweaked a little bit, but um, people go, I can do this. And that's just another thing that you, wow. That's, and that by itself if, if yeah. someone was curious like that would be incredibly valuable that by itself oh, yeah um, that's i, I want to go watch those myself that sounds really fascinating um yeah, and what what i appreciate is it's not just something you just put together and no one's been through it like you you've had dozens and dozens at, at least to go through this thing like it's people are, are using it um yeah that's it's, it's been tested it tried and tested. Um, I think we started in 2017. Hmm. And I think we've got about 150 people around the world now who've gone through the program, who are using the program. Um, I've lost count of how many countries now. <laughs> all, all these different countries, people using the same method. And um, yeah, they absolutely love it. And um, yeah, very proud of it. And I just want to share it. I literally want to get this method out because I know, I know what it's like to have been in a career dead-end career where you're just doing it for the money your heart's not in it and you just want a little glimmer of life and um what i'd say though is don't do this just for the money you gotta love mm. dogs and i'd really like it if you 
you got to like people a bit as well. This mm. approach is not just about taking the dogs and training them. This is about wanting to help people and, and want to do it for the greater good, for the greater good of humanity, of the greater good of the animals, of the dogs. And it's about wanting to discover something about yourself, about mm. the dogs, about how we are connected and we can connect and we can communicate. And if that kind of makes you go, wow, and you, you love seeing dogs transformed without even laying a hand on them, yeah, maybe this is for you. Wow. So it sounds like it's for the people that you know are looking to have that passion or that fulfillment uh, or a little bit more of it, that, that, that like dogs, um, that enjoy people. Um, but they're not in it you know, for the money is the main thing. You make, can make a good amount of money, um, but it sounds like it's, you know, if, if people enjoy dogs and they like people, then, then this is something that can work for them. Absolutely. I mean, you can make it a full-time job and I love Cindy. I'm so proud of Cindy. She, like I say, she makes so much money and there's other people who are making, you know, six figures and, and that's great. And that's, and you can certainly do that. However, so, if you're in it just for the money, it becomes, it misses the mark. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all profit, no passion. Not, not what we're talking about here. No. Um, so we talked a little bit about the, the details of, of the business of, of being a dog trainer, but what about, yeah, the complicated stuff, you know, like websites, um, customers, finding clients like that, even what to say to people on the phone, like there's all these little things when you, when you have your own, you know, side gig, um, like what do people have to expect when it so, comes to that? So, yeah, I mean, you pretty much nailed the big ones that people are concerned about. And what I would say is we've done, it's, it's so easy now to do all of those things in, in a way, you know, building a website, it, it doesn't have to be flash anymore. It's pretty much a contact page where people can find your details and give you a call. Once then there's like uh, there's templates out there. It's, there's it's templates quick. out there. And even, you know, we, we have a, we have a group of people who have already done this. So in, in the, um, you know, a lot of these people share, share information. Say, here's my website. This is what I've done. This is what I've done. Everyone's scattered around the world. So, so yeah. somebody in Seattle doesn't care if somebody in, um, London or Birmingham or, you know, That's another beautiful. country chooses something similar or similar words. Hmm. Um, and then, you know, things like what to say on the phone. I've, I've done everything I can. So like the script, there's, 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 video, there's videos of me kind of doing demonstrations of what to say on the phone. So somebody says this and there's videos explaining how to get people to convert to say, yes, I want you to come around and train my dog. And hmm. even scripts written out. So this is what That's, you should be saying. Wow. That's yeah, That's it's all, all done for you. And in terms of actually getting more traffic to your site, you don't have to do any of that stuff. In fact, I would say don't do it. I started trying to do stuff. You mean talking about advertising online and yeah, stuff like that? You just, I've got the best guy that I could find, and I've used a lot of guys. And I just give you his contact numbers and details and say, can you do for me what you're doing for all these other dog trainers? He's fine-tuned it down to such a, a skill and an art that he knows exactly what words to get traffic to your site if they're interested in puppies or dogs in your area. He pretty much just changes the area from Alabama to Michigan hmm. or the little suburb, dog training, in, and then you, he points the traffic to your website. But and honestly, uh, that, that's really if you want to really grow this thing. Like if, if you're just looking for a few people, I mean, you can probably put some posters on you know, a telephone pole somewhere or you, you know, can, Craigslist, you, like we were saying. Absolutely. There's, there's so many different ways of doing it, but... Um, Heck, all of that stuff, park, park. you know, I, you just uh, go hang out at a dog park and be like, hey, can I play with your dog? <laughs> I, I do. I do explain, though, how the, the, the I, I give you as much knowledge as, as I can. And I explain if you really want to get up and running, I'd suggest spending just a little bit of money on advertising because because it gives you that like a poof. It gives you like 10 clients. And then you feel and, like I can do this. It gives you the confidence. Yeah. Word of mouth starts spreading. If you kind of start from here, it can take it's like an airplane taking off. I'm like, what's happening? Nothing's happening. Yeah, you, you want to take off a bit more like a helicopter. And if that costs mm. 100 bucks a week for two, three, four weeks. And the whole thing is, you might think, oh, I don't have 100 bucks a week. Well, if you spend 100 weeks and you get one client and you make 300 bucks. <laughs> there you go. You paid for three weeks of that. You do that another so, two weeks. So, so the next three, week four, you spend, clients. and guess what? If you spend 500 bucks the next week and you get six clients. Or to, you know, or to make six. It's just crazy because you're earning so much more money than you're spending on the advertising. It's, it's a no-brainer. 
And, that's, and then those people wow. then start doing the word of mouth stuff. So it's not as complex. And then you finally go, I'm, I can cal- cut right back on any advertising and stuff. So, so all so, of that's covered off. It Everything is... So it sounds simple. Z. It's not like people need to do anything super complex. Um, no. It's all covered step by step. No. Um, yeah. And I mean, the big need thing is... Fancy skills aside the ability to... No talk <laughs> yeah building websites generating traffic all that stuff i suggest you don't do it so wow but all that the rest yeah that's that's amazing so i mean this 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 is honestly i could just tell from the way that you've, you've shared and the passion behind it um and the stories you've shared like this is incredible and so the, for the people that are listening if they're interested in in doing this you know if whether it's a side gig part-time um, or maybe they're, you know, they're ready for a big shift and, and they want to eventually move to full time and, and making a really good living from it. Like what are the next steps for people? Yeah. So what we've done is we've made this an absolute no brainer and, you know, there's literally millions of people worldwide who are in desperate need of help all over the world. So what we've done is we've set this at an incredibly reasonable amount to invest for what is a life-changing opportunity. And, you know, people have actually said to me, this should be priced at tens of thousands of dollars because, you know, people are earning good money. It's a full, it can be a full-time job. It can be, you know, you can make it your full-time profession and earn an incredible salary. But basically I've set it up as a one-off payment of just 2,000 US dollars. That's it. A single payment. So you pay nothing else and you get absolutely everything. So what you get is you get lifetime access to all the programs. That's, you know, the consults where you can watch me going in and working with dogs and there's about 30 or so of those programs, (laughs) consults. You get access to the cafe catch-up calls with me and the rest of the the trainers where we come on board and support each other and ask questions and answer questions and and uh, whether it's personal stuff personal training or dog training or business stuff i'm there to help you succeed hold your hand as much as you need all the way and you get access to the facebook group where everyone's in there helping each other out and all the other bonuses so if you're willing to invest basically two thousand dollars for all you know, you do that once and then, you know, you can earn $2,000 or more back every month from now on doing something you love, then then this could well be for you. And the other thing is this this all comes with a 60-day money-back guarantee as well. So, um, you know, just get started. Take the little leap. Um, and if after a month you decide it's not really what you're looking for or, you know, any time up to 60 days, it's nearly two months. If you decide it's not what you were expecting, it's not what you wanted or something happens um then just let us know and and yeah 60 day money back guarantee so there's nothing to lose um it really is it's a we've tried to make it a no-brainer and um yeah that's that's pretty much what it is now and and i should add in for some of you you know if two thousand dollars is too much and you you'd prefer a payment plan we have set it up as well so you can do 10 payments of 300 dollars per month so you can basically get started for just $300 per month. I mean, it is absolutely unbelievable because you can earn that in one dog consult. That's how crazy this is. You know, it costs $300 a month for 10 months, which comes to $3,000. US But in, a, in one consult, you can charge $300 back um, once you're training a dog and you can get up and running within a couple of months. So we really have tried to make it an absolute no-brainer, Ryan. Wow, Dan, that is an absolutely incredible deal. I mean, even a single year of college in the States can go as high as $50,000. And with this, it's you know relatively small fee, one time, and then you gain a skill and a business that you could run for the rest of your life, getting paid very well to do what you love. Hanging out with dogs and helping families and owners build a deeper connection with their dog. That's, I mean, that's what I'm talking about. That's what we're all about here. Now, I have one more question, Dan. So some of our listeners might not be ready to dive in you know, and become a dog trainer, but they're still very interested in everything you've shared, yeah. your method, um, and what you do with dogs and how you work with owners. Is there another option for everyone else? Um 
who, who still wants to learn more about this way that you have of working with dogs. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. So for those of you who have enjoyed listening to this podcast and um, you're maybe not quite ready to give the Dog Trainer Academy, you know, route a go, but you want to know more about my dog training approach. You want to know more about this method. It sounds beautiful. You are really seriously interested maybe at some stage, but you're not ready to take the jump today. Then I totally get it. And, and sometimes you kind of want to experience the magic first um, before you dive in. In fact, over 80% of the people who are inside the Dog Trainer Academy and are now, you know, becoming dog trainers and doing being dog trainers, they have already used my online training program called The Online Dog Trainer to train their own dogs. So that's the training program, theonlinedogtrainer.com is where you can train your own dog. So if you're interested but you're not ready to commit just yet, then what I've done is I've set up a very special, another absolute no-brainer, and it's an offer for three days. You get full access to the online dog trainer, all my method solving, you know, all those behavioral issues, the barking, the jumping, the pulling on the leash, the not coming when called, the dog aggression, all of that stuff. It includes the dog calming code, which is the absolute most powerful program. It's the, the foundation. You get all access to all of that for just one dollar. And it works so fast, this program. This method is so powerful. A lot of people, they actually say within three days, you know, because there's a 60-day money-back guarantee, I should add as well. So within three days, a lot of people sort of say, hey, thanks for canceling because the dog problem solved. That's how fast this method works. Remember, it's very different. It's completely different from using treats or using, you know, force and aggression. And the other beautiful thing is anyone can do it. It really is such a simple program the way we set it up. We've been going over a decade. You know, tens of thousands of people have used it. So we've refined it so that we know exactly how people's minds work and brains work and how the learning process is, uh, how people like to learn. So it's set up in a simple step-by-step -step process and it's tried and tested. And it requires very little effort. So most of what we're actually going to show you is how to make very small changes to what you're already doing and when you make those changes you're going to get these huge returns you're going to see the changes in your dog you're going to go wow i get it this is different i want more i'm in and then you can you know have a look at the dog trainer academy when you when you're ready but you know i fully recommend you take advantage of these uh one of these two offers um because you know with the one dollar trial you can experience the magic of using this method now if you stay on because you absolutely love it and you go because there is a lot of there's a lot of information a lot of videos in there a lot of programs in the online dog trainer so after the three-day trial for a single dollar if you want to stay on for a month or two or three or longer because some people just love it it's 37 dollars a month and of course you can cancel during the three-day trial you won't pay another dollar and um, like i said earlier it comes with a 60-day money-back guarantee uh, so really there you go check it out um yeah but i fully recommend you do something if you do nothing nothing changes you know you really do miss out and get started with the dta the dog trainer academy you won't look back in fact it could be the best decision you ever make or check out the online dog trainer get your dog trained for just a dollar discover this amazing method and um yeah you can thank me later but uh yeah it's my pleasure well i thank you those are amazing uh, discounts and deals that you're offering our listeners. Um, I'll, I'll reach out to one of your tech guys and get the the details, and then I'll set up some uh, links below this video. Um, so if you're watching this on the recording, then you should see down below you there should be two buttons, um, and w one of them will be something for you to go get the uh, DTA and take advantage of that amazing deal that Dan has just laid out for us, and the other um, is to train your dog yourself at home for just a dollar. So uh, go ahead and click one of those, um, dive on in. I know I'm excited to dive on in. And Dan, thank you so much for, for taking the time to be here with us to explain your method and everything that you do with the dogs and with the dog trainers and just the impact that you're helping create in the world and all of your students as well. Um, and for you know creating an opportunity for our listeners to transform their life through these two opportunities that you've laid out. So thank you so much, Dan. I really appreciate it.
Yeah, thank you, Ryan. It's it's been an absolute blast. It's a pleasure, and you know, people people wonder where's where's the wonderful opportunities, and sometimes you've got to be able to spot them, and th- that is what I've tried to set up here for people. You know, it really is a golden opportunity for those people who have a huge heart, who have a huge love for the dogs, and who are ready to put a bit of graft in, put a bit of work in. If you want to become a dog trainer, of course, you've got to take the steps. Um, but this is this is a real opportunity, and um, I know you can do it if you're committed. And of course, the online dog trainer is it's for one dollar. Yeah, love you guys to check that out. Um, thank you for having me on the show, Ryan. It's uh, it's been a pleasure. All right, Dan. Until next time, can't wait to speak with you again. Have yeah. a wonderful day. Yeah, you too. Take care, mate. Bye bye. <laughs>